Hi, and welcome to Underground Video Network's Behind the Counter. Michael Boroff here. As with me always is Richard Catterjohn. Hello. This episode we're going to do a review of a comic book, a comic book book, and give you an update on the conventions that are coming up soon. It is the early 2013, and it is the beginning of convention season. Oh, definitely. Um, there's been a few out there we really hadn't got to, but mm -hmm. right now, starting in March, there's conventions almost every weekend. Oh, God bless them. And we just want to run down a few. I know the Buckeye Comic Con, which has been the annual uh, Harper Convention Series, is going to be in the Columbus area. Um, let's see, March the 3rd, which is a Sunday afternoon, which mm -hmm. is a great show to get down to. And then the and then next week is the uh, Columbus Indie Comic Fair returning. Last year was the inaugural year, and we didn't get down there last year no, for uh, sorry, other guys. circumstances. But um, Nick's Comics is uh, promoting this and is tying in with the uh, space. So it's a little bit of combination. It's a lot of the indie creators in the Columbus market, mm -hmm. and it's at the Ace of Cups. And then after that is a friend of ours, Dan Con. Oh, Dan. Decapitate Dan's doing his oh, convention Dan. out in Chicago area. Um, we kind of thought about maybe trying to make it, but the uh, way certain circumstances are turning out, we're just not going to make it. Spring's not going to be very good for us, but we're but thinking fall. There's fall. a fall convention in September yeah. time frame, so hopefully when we get out there that. Sorry, Dan, but we want to do a big shout out to your show. And then following that is the uh, Lexington Comic Toy and Comic con on uh, march the 16th my favorite things but we're not going to get down that Damn it. sorry but we do want to give <sighs> a shout out um but that's the one where it has all the uh, power rangers it's a mini power ranger convention so if you get a chance to go down there go to that and then wrap up the month will be the uh, return of gem city comic con and they're moving into a bigger facility Hello. this year, so it's going to be great. Um, go to our website. There's linkage. Go to the comic and event page, and it's all been updated as of the taping of the show. We're going to be uh, Wright State, the Nutter Center, right? Correct. Oh, God. Big. Anybody watches the show, I there are a lot of shows that I want to be able to go to that I can't just because of time restraints, but Jim City has always had a special place in my heart and be Hello, high water. I will be there at Gem City. I think this is like the fifth year the crew has been down there. Yeah, yeah. So we're very, we're very much we're looking forward to all of them. Sorry if I give a little nod to Gem City, but this is just a you. start. Yeah. Oh <laughs> April, God, we're not even, May, God. <laughs> and then Free Comic Book Day sometime in May. You know, yep. so everything's going to be uh, coming through. But I am going to keep the uh, page up to date. I'm giving a little different design to it, so mm. it's easier access and can find all information for all these conventions. Yeah, and silly me, I've been updating my MySpace page, and nobody's been following, and that's part of the reason why nobody's going to anything. Nobody told me MySpace isn't used anymore. So, hey. so yeah. We still got our MySpace. Though. We still, we were. You think we're joking? We really do. God love it. It's got the sparkly backgrounds, and I've got my little player off to the side. It's got some relic of an '80s tune on there, you know. So, hopefully someday it'll, you know, everything else is being nostalgic. Maybe, maybe MySpace will, you know, make that comeback. So. Fans of the show know that we become very attached to our friends in the comic book community. Uh, artists, writers, uh, just creators in general, and um, we always take pride in when you know they they do something incredibly achieving. Um, for anybody who's watched the show before, you know that we take a lot of time when we we run to our friend uh, Dirk Manning, who you may know from uh, Nightmare World. Uh, just fantastic guy. If you ever get a chance, if you're at a convention. And you, you see Dirk Manning's booth, go go talk to him. He's one of the most approachable, nicest gentlemen you've ever met, and one of the most fantastic writers you will ever you'll ever come across. So fantastic, in fact, that he's written this book. Yes, it's a full fledged wordy with like I think there's maybe a picture in here or something, but he wrote a book called Right or Wrong. And it is a fantastic book. It is his collection of stories of how he's broken into the comic book creating industry. Now, it's it's a fantastic read, and I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt because I'm a huge Rick Manning fan. This is a fantastic book. Anybody who's even inkling with the idea of breaking into the comic book industry should sit down and read this book. Now, let me be honest with you, I've read over the years many how-to-write books, and they come across as 
textbooky and formulaic. This book is less that than it is conversational. Now, being that I know Dirk Manning and I've talked to him several times, I kind of suffer from that. Um, the Morgan Freeman syndrome. When you know, whenever you see a picture of Morgan Freeman and there's text next to it, you read it in his in his voice. Well, being that I know Dirk Manning, as I read this, I hear his voice in my head. And it doesn't come across like a textbook. It really does come across as a conversation. This is someone who's paid his dues, who has had the ups and has the downs. And he's not in this book telling you what to do. He's telling you what he's done and what to do. I contradict myself, but what he's done and what he didn't do. And I'm going to be honest with you, I, I'm not a comic book writer. I probably won't be. I enjoyed the life out of this book because it is a good read. And um, you can find it on Amazon.com. That's right. Man, dude made it big. Seriously, it's not just like some indie book you're going to find at a convention on a, a stand somewhere. Amazon.com. It is a fantastic book. If you get a chance to pick it up, order it. The man's anywhere. He'll sign it for you. And uh, uh, you can check out his work at Newsarama.com. And also his website, DirkManning.com. And Dirk, this one's for you. On to comic books. Uh, one of the big comic books that has recently come out is Batman issue 17, the conclusion to death of the family. Not death in the family, death of the family. Way to be creative there, DC. Um, Richard, what was your overall impression of the conclusion to this monumental milestone story that's been taking place in the DC universe? Well, Just Batman's. Well, it's Bruce Wayne. It's yeah. Batman. So, um, I don't know. This whole part, it seemed like it was going here, there, mm -hmm. if you read the whole storyline. But this more or less does wrap it up. Yeah. And it really, the good play between the Joker and oh, Batman. Oh, yeah. And I think the Joker kind of stole the book as yeah. normal. And it just really worked, but it really showed Batman's take of the Joker. Yeah, it really showed you, let's be honest, Bruce Wayne's mindset when it comes to the Joker. And it, it was a fantastic little psychological insight as to both of them. You know, just the the candor between the two of them is like the Joker's like, you know you love me. You know. It's, it's that abusive, you hate to say it, but it's like that Jerry Springer abusive relationship. You know you love me. You know you love me. Whack! Why'd you make me do that? You know course, I love you. Of course, until he whispered who he is, and then Joker went totally ballistic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, no! <laughs> Which, part of that, that part right there, was one of my only uh, complaints about the book. Because I found it was a fantastic, in and of itself, comic book it was a fantastic story with everything that's been led up to it I, it was just a, a smidge anticlimactic because yeah what do we get at the end spoiler you get the stereotypical cliche wily e. coyote falling off a cliff and then you you, you you find yourself saying the same thing go after him you, you gotta you got a damn bat grapple go down there and find his body go why are you sitting there? You're, he's washing away. Go get him, you know? But that's what happened. Other than that, <laughs> I the big reveal, we got to, you know, the spoil, we're going to spoil. The big reveal was what was in the the serving dishes or the, the you know. It was it was it was cool. I liked it. I I will be the big reveal was that when they opened up all of them, it was their faces, a la the Joker cutting off his face. And I'm going to be honest with you for a moment a moment, I, I suspended disbelief. I'd forgotten all the previews catalogs that I've flipped through that showed me Batman and Robin and Nightwing's books two months into the future. You know, for a second, I suspended I suspended belief and was like, <gasps> "Ooh, oh God!" You know, and then and let me ask you, what was your take when you find out that it was a joke? I just figured that's how it had to be. I mean, I did too. They're not going to change the norm. No, they're not going to change the norm. And here's but my poor Alfred. Oh God! But my, my thing with the faces was, if it was any other villain who who did this, I I would call shenanigans and say, man, do something, commit to it. But being that it was the Joker, it was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> it was like. I, I read it twice because the first time I'm like, man, that was kind of a letdown, and I reread it again. I'm like, that's the Joker. It's like. 
ah, and then to release, you know, the gas and, and to pit them against each other, you. He knew what was going to happen. He knew they were going to get free, and he knew. I mean, he that, had that every cool look with the animal with the. Oh head and God, stuff. that, that was so gross. <laughs> oh, they got away with a little bit there. <laughs> yeah, they. I'm going to be honest with you. For anybody who's been keeping up on uh, sidebar, real quick, keeping up on like Green Lantern here recently. DC's pushing what they show anymore. I'm you're you're seeing. You mean the space zombies? <laughs> the space zombies and. Oh, uh, what was it recently? Um, uh, the Green Lantern Corps. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God, this is for anybody who's you know read DC for as long as I did. You know, remembering the days back of the code. What code? Yeah, you know. But back to the book. Yeah, I, it, seventeen. Um, it was clever. Death of the family. I would have liked to have seen. They they tooted it from the beginning as death of the family, but at the very end of the book. Again, yeah, anticlimactic. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any sense that the family's dead, you know. Sure, they all didn't come rushing to Alfred's side, which kind of bugged me, because feel what you want about Bruce. Tim Drake, Jason Todd, Alfred's in bed. You're gonna, they're going to go. They're going to be there. Yeah. But, again, we didn't get that definitive feel of death of the family. It's like, what happened? Okay. Even if it wasn't, you know, literal, like somebody died, for one of them to say... I'm out, you know. I would have got that, but for all in all, I, it was a very enjoyable read, and I'm looking forward to the upcoming issues that are going to be the aftermath of. Uh, yeah, I think that I'm going to buy the books yeah. anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yep, yeah, Batman issue one uh, seventeen. The little part I liked with uh, Bruce Wayne. Yes. Where, where they did the flashback, where Bruce <gasps> went to with the Joker, and basically Joker don't know who he is. No, the Joker knows who yeah, he is. Yeah, but he doesn't care yeah. who he... That's what I meant. Yes. He doesn't care who that, he is. You're absolutely right. That one flashback scene from years ago, it was like, I think the first time the Joker was put in Arkham Asylum, Bruce Wayne goes, a visit, or goes for a visit, finds a way to sneak off and talk to the Joker, and the Joker knows right then, right there, Batman's Bruce Wayne. And just, just the idea that he's known for this entire time. But he never cared. But he never cared. That wasn't the that joke. Was, that was the whole part of it. Yeah. To to announce to everybody that Bruce Wayne was Batman would have spoiled the joke. It would have it would have it would have ruined the punchline. Uh, that, that that's that's what I meant. Yes, that that was fantastic. But it also makes you go back and wonder too, because Bruce kept telling them, No, he doesn't know who you are. Oh. That's BS. He's he's lying. You know, it's just the Joker being Joker, but now you know that the Joker knows who Bruce Wayne is. Do the math. So yeah, true. the entire time when Bruce is telling the family, no, 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 no. He's, no this is the stories before the Fifty Two. Yeah, <laughs> he's just going on. But uh, I'm sorry, I just had to. Well, no, he he kidnapped uh in, in Batgirl. Oh yeah, he true. kidnapped yeah. his her mother. Yeah, and knew who everybody was. Knew so. who everybody was. He uh, Tim Drake's father, who yeah, he knew. But Bruce didn't let them on that he knew. Yeah, but he that's knew. what I meant. <laughs> we know that he knows, but they don't know that we know that he knows. But Bruce now knows. Not, not, that's too complicated. That's too complicated. Welcome to the 52. Okay, we want to let everybody know that we've been expanding with the show a little bit. Yes. Sir. Um, we're spinning off some shows and stuff. We decided to start UVN Spotlight, which is basically a show that highlights indie creators mm -hmm. basically features them we've done a few episodes we went down to hot shot number six uh, premiere party we did the kids part and the adult parts those videos are up now uh, we went down to twilight star and uh, and did a uh, bill gladman did a um, what do you want to call it? preview of all their books that's right. coming out uh, coming up to the gem city and stuff so what we're trying to say is if you want to be on the show, let us know. Oh, yeah. You can't just rely on this pretty face for the entire time, man. We need your guys' help, too. I mean, we've done interviews. We've had them mm -hmm. on the show and stuff. But we decided to kind of spin this off so it would be easier for people to find right. the actual creators behind the books and stuff. I know we kind of throw them all together in convention coverages and stuff. Mm -hmm. But this way is going to be a little easier to find the episodes. And hopefully this will be individually creators and stuff. We did some stuff from the Summit City last year, which was the first six which was originally featuring just on Facebook. Right. But that didn't quite work, work, so we decided to make it into a real series. 
Mm -hmm. So this is coming out. When you see us at conventions, you can either just highlight yourself. You don't even have to have us talking to you. No. If you want to sit there and take the mic and explain what you have coming up, what projects, what books. If you're having a release party, please let us know. We'll be down. Mm -hmm. We love parties. Um, it was a great time down. Mike, thanks for inviting us down. Er, and um, Bill, like you said, Twilight Star is going to be doing more later. Yes. I talked to a few other creators. They're going to be start doing this. Mm -hmm. But it'd be a good thing when we're at conventions. We can pick this up and right. move on. So this is the show, but a little different. Right. Because basically what it boils down to is with all the interviews we've done, people just kept saying, Mike, with you interviewing people, we... We can't pay attention to you. It's all, it's all you, buddy. We just these eyes. It's, it's like a moment right here. I don't. I. We don't care who you're talking to. So it's like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna step out. Spotlight right here. It just makes things a little simpler. Yeah. So, uh, stay tuned for that. And with convention season just getting started, we hope to see you there.